Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. Today we're going to get on with one of those pesky jobs. I'm having to reseal an aquarium. So this is an aquarium from my fish room. So when I moved house, I broke it. I didn't break it, it broke. <laughs> um, the bottom seal along the bottom here um, at the front. So I had it sitting on a rack like this rack here and it was sitting on some uh, polystyrene. And over time, it kind of bonded to the polystyrene. So when I pulled it, it kind of delaminated a little bit and started leaking. So not a huge leak or anything, but it no longer holds water and we don't need that in an aquarium. So I'm going to run you through the tools that I'm going to use, the way that I do it, which isn't necessarily the right way, and we'll see how we get on. As you can see, I have a somewhat unorthodox approach to fixing fish tanks. So this one cracked straight down the middle, and all I've done is put a bead of silicone all the way up and down. It's never going to be the most sturdy or secure aquarium, but it's quite a small one relatively. And it's been like that for a couple of years, absolutely fine. Same with this one over here. I bashed it on a door and cracked it just here uh, where the overflow is. Again, just blob some silicone on both sides. Holds together fine. It's not right, but it works. So if you want to skip to the bit where we just get on with the resealing, go to this timestamp here. Otherwise, I'll talk you through the tools that we're going to use. So. We need to have some silicon first and foremost. This is probably the most important part of it. I use this stuff, it's HA6. I think I get it off Amazon, so I'll leave a link in the description. It's a marine grade um, silicon. That doesn't necessarily mean it's um, suited for marine aquariums or anything like that. It just means that salt water doesn't degrade it, but it is suitable for aquariums. If you can't get this stuff, what you're looking for is something without any additives. So no mold prevention, no fungicides, algicides, all that kind of stuff. You just want 100% silicon and then that will do the job. This is a clear one, so perfect for the aquariums. Um, and this is something I've used for years, so it's, I know it works and I know it's fine. The trouble with the other ones with all the mold and algae resistant stuff is that it leaches some of these into the, the water and those can be toxic to your fish and you don't want that. So, I've got this, I've got a cock gun to apply it. Um, paper towels, very important, or you can use your other, just a normal towel if you don't mind ruining it, but I've been doing this for years and I've never not managed to get it all over myself, so this helps get silicon off your fingers. It also helps with the cleaning because something you've got to do is clean it and dry it because you don't want to apply it to something that's wet or dirty. So I'm going to wipe down round there and I'm going to dry it off with this. I'm also going to use this. This is like a, a silicon removal tool. It has a brother for a silicon application tool, but I can't find that. Lost it in the house move somewhere. I've never used it before for aquariums, but I redid my old bathroom with this and it was great at getting the silicon off. So basically it just scrapes out the old silicon. So the process that I'm going to use is scrape out the old silicon, give it a clean down, give it a dry, apply the new silicon and wait. It really is as simple as that. Um, a quick point of order, <laughs> often on the internet you'll see people saying that you have to remove all the silicon, it's really important to get rid of all the silicon. Silicon doesn't stick to silicon. Silicon does stick to silicon. Silicon sticks to pretty much everything silicon comes in contact with. What they really mean is silicon doesn't stick as well to silicon as it does to glass. So if you're doing a small patch job, if it's an emergency, by all means, put a whole blob on there, cover it up, let it set, and it will cure that leak. It just won't look very nice. So if you have the chance and if you have the ability, get as much of the silicon off as you can, and then you'll have a longer lasting um, solution. So it will last a lot longer, it will look a lot better, and everyone's happy. So what I'm not going to do in this one is, because it's a fish room tank, it's going to live in my fish room, I'm not that bothered about the neatest of finishes. If I was, if this was a display tank, I might get some masking tape and mask off every line in the aquarium, just leaving the gap of where I want the silicon to be applied. That way, once I've gone around and sealed it, I can rub it down with my finger, pull away the masking tape and I'll have a nice clean finish. I'm not that bothered about it, so I'm just going to use my finger and it might be a little bit rough around the edges, but I really don't care, so we'll be happy with that. In terms of what order to do things, get rid of the silicon that you're going to get rid of first, then clean it, then dry it, then apply the silicon. So first things first, I'm going to get in here and just scrape away the silicon. With this tool, it's really quite easy because all you do is you run it along the beads, 
and it just pops off leaves you all this lovely unused silicon if you don't have a tool like this any kind of blade a stanley knife some kind of blade just run it along peel it off what you can uh, and then you'll be good to go so i've tipped it on its end this is the front bottom side side i've cleaned out the silicon from all of these i'm leaving the back because i know it's fine uh, and i'm lazy so what we're going to do is make sure that this is all clean, I mean I know it doesn't look clean, it's still grubby on the outside and everything, but the bits where the silicone are going to go, it's as clean as it needs to be. There are still some remnants of silicon. I could spend hours and hours trying to get them all out, but it's really not going to make a difference. So, let's apply the silicon. Uh, so, get my silicon, get my little tool or anything else. I just like this one because it cuts off the top, it's got a little thing there. It doesn't work. Ready to go. Screw it in. And again, this is a good way to practice if you do have any old tanks or some fish room tanks or something. So as when you do come to do a display tank, you've got a little bit more experience and you know what it's going to go like. But my general approach is whack it on thick and clean up afterwards. It's not imperative at this stage, but I like to work fairly fast for this bit. So I'm only going to do three sides. So if you had to do the lot, it'd be a little bit more challenging, but basically a big thick bead down, thick bead across, thick bead back up, and then go over my finger and smooth it all in. And that's it, just leave it. So here we go. Obviously made it more challenging for myself by sticking a GoPro in the way, but I'll give it a bash. And in with the finger. Just a kind of light pressure, because you don't want to squeeze it all out, you just want to squeeze it into any gaps that you've managed to create. Et voila! This is where this comes in handy. So I'll now go in and inspect it, make sure I've not left any gaps, make sure there's not any bits where there's obvious air pockets or anything like that. And then we should be good to go. So that's it, fairly fuss free, um, easy enough, but we won't know whether it's successful until we fill it with water. So we need to wait for the sealant to set. Um, most people say give it 24 hours, 48 hours. If you've got the time, yes, that works. I found it's generally fine after about 12 hours, especially in a tank this size. Um, because it's quite a small bead, we're sealing up rather than using it as an adhesive to hold the panels together. Um, but we'll give it time, you can tell, usually it stinks when it's fresh, smell of vision, um, and then that smell goes away once it's set and you can feel, feel it to touch. It's no longer tacky and you can see that it's set. So we'll let it set and then we'll fill it up and we'll come back and see whether or not it worked. While we wait for the silicon to go off, I've got all my other normal jobs to do in the fish room, do all the water changes, but I've got a couple of extra jobs I want to do to these tanks here. So I've got my flower horn tank up here and my discus tank. The quick recap, main discus tank, kaput, go and see my earlier video about that one. So the discus are living in here until I sort that out. Hopefully going to replace it with a new tank. They're going to be in here for a good few weeks at least. Uh, and then Humphrey, this is Humphrey's tank. Humphrey the flower horn lives up here. This is tank. I'm going to make it look a little bit nicer just by adding some substrate. So they were all freaking out every time I came into the, the fish room. Um, so I put in some decoration, so some wood and some rocks and a little bit of moss and stuff like that. That has helped immensely. I am going to put in some sand on the bottom, just a light dusting of sand to cover that off. It should make them feel a little bit more comfortable. Um, I think they're getting still getting a bit freaked out by the reflections and things like that. They don't seem to like it being a bare bottom tank. So fine, we'll sort that out. And then Humphrey, I'm gonna give him some gravel just as a, something to play with. We did have gravel in his tank for a very short time and he seemed to enjoy just digging it up, moving it around, redecorating his own tank. So while he's living in this smaller tank, give him a little bit of enrichment, something that he can get his mouth into and hopefully that'll keep him a little bit happier if he's in a smaller tank for a little while. 
and then we can swap them back when we get everything sorted out. So let's get all that added up. I've been rinsing out some gravel, got it in a bucket, so let's get it in here. Basically what I've got is a, a bucket full of gravel. Um, it's not actually aquarium gravel, I think it's ag agricultural grit or agricultural gravel. I bought like a 50 kilo bag years ago and I'm still using it. I've used it for years. You do have to be careful when you use things that aren't necessarily for aquariums because they can sometimes have other things in them, but this doesn't, so we're good to go. But just check wherever you're getting it from. I'm just looking for a scoop so I can get it in there. Uh, check wherever you get your stuff from that it'll be fine but sometimes aquarium products just the word aquarium adds 25% onto the price so I can't find my scoop either I've lost that so we'll use an old food tub to to spoon it in Purposely doing this from my height because he likes to bite me. Here we are, a day later, 24 hours has gone by. I just had other things to do, so I, I left it longer than 12 hours. Um, Humphrey's got his new tank, he's all settled. Don't know yet whether he's any happier yet. He's done a little bit of rearranging, but not much. And I've got sand in the discus tank down here, so it's looking a lot better. Still a little bit dusty, but I think that'll keep them happier. Uh, the lights have just come on so that's why they're all still a bit sleepy but more importantly the tank here should be all sealed so I can tell the smell has now gone to touch it's all fine there's no tackiness it's been in there perfectly long enough but well, as I said earlier the only way to tell is to fill it up with water and see what happens so what I like to do is get it filled up and leave some paper towels so some kitchen roll Another good use for it as well as cleaning your fingers is just leave that under the seals at the bottom, fill it up, leave it for a while, come back and check it after a couple of hours and see if there's any dampness. So let's do that. So there we have it, tank's all filled up, well I filled it up to about there, no point in wasting water. Um, left it for a couple of hours, it's dry as a bone down here, it's always a good idea to leave it for a bit after you fill it up just to make sure it's not a slow leak that's happening. Battery died, sorry. So as I was saying, I've left the paper towel under the tank for a couple of hours, dry as a bone so far, I think it's a good idea to leave it for a while because slow leaks can develop and that catches them, but it seems so good. So I hope you enjoyed this, a bit of an update showing you how I would reseal a tank, a little bit of what's going on in the fish room. If you like this sort of thing, please consider clicking that subscribe button down there, it really helps out, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!